Now, as we've been reporting this hour, there is growing concern about violent crime in London. After two shootings overnight, a 17-year-old girl, named locally as Tanisha, shot dead in Tottenham, and a 16-year-old boy critically ill after being found with gunshot wounds in Walthamstow. Well, London's murder rate has risen sharply this year, with 47 murders so far. Eight people were killed in January. In February, there were 15 homicides and last month there was another increase 22 people were killed in March well with us here in the studio now is Junior Smart who's founder of the SOS project at St Giles's Trust uh, who became a youth worker after uh, being an offender and uh, we're also joined via webcam from Dorset by the criminologist and filmmaker Roger Grave so thanks to both of you for being with us Junior first of all um, to you do you believe that there is a real problem now with surging violent crime in the capital and and if if so what is what is the reason for it uh, it's it's terrible when I think about all the deaths that have happened it I'm just gutted, I'm mortified. These are children. These are children that have lost their lives. Um, there's many reasons for the catalyst. Of course, social media has got a big part to play in this. You know, most people, most of the viewers probably woke up this morning, first thing they did, check their mobile phone to see whether they've had likes or whether someone's commented on their post or whatever else. There's this big need for social validation, but also what it does is it accelerates everything. So things are no longer hearsay. You can see stuff, it's immediate. Contrast that and bringing it forward with the other stuff that we've seen that's been happening. So it's a symptom. You've got cuts happening to youth services, cuts to mental health. You've got cuts that are happening within the communities. And although, you know, You've got, all, you've got some really good initiatives that have been put forward, such as hashtag knife free. You've got save our boys, save our girls that's been happening in Candom off, of, off of the back of the murders that happened out there. Actually, we need everyone to get together. This needs a holistic approach. This needs the work. It needs prevention work in schools. Young people till, still tell me that there's safe places that you can get stabbed. Absolutely horrifying. Um, agencies need to come together. And Roger Grafe, what, what is your view on this? Is this because of a proliferation of gangs in the capital, do you think? Well, that's certainly a factor. But the point about, I, I totally agree with everything Junior has said, but particularly the need for safe spaces, for hmm. youth clubs that are now shut, for the kinds of refuges that these kids need. And all the years that I've made films and studied young offenders, or young people, really, at, uh, as they were growing up at risk, they are really frightened of each other and they don't feel anyone else cares about them or will protect them. And the cuts in police don't help either, but the police need to have trust, that to it, enough time to build the trust of these kids and then create safe spaces which they themselves trust. And that's missing in this equation. I think combined with social media, the acceleration of people's insecurity and a feeling that nobody else cares about them. They need their weapons and they need their gang to protect them. So you're saying they're frightened and that is why they're joining gangs, in a sense, to defend themselves? Yes, I am saying that. Uh, certainly many of the people I've met who were gang members, and Junior was one, he'll know better than I would, um, joined for security. They, when, you, when they were alone with me, I've never been threatened. I mean, I've made 60 films on the justice system. I've been at eight or nine prisons, worked with a huge number of young offenders. No one's ever even threatened me because I treat them with respect and they trust mm -hmm. that. And Junior, is that then your experience, that people are joining gangs, young people in their teens joining gangs to defend themselves effectively because they're scared? I wouldn't use the term gangs. When we, we, the whole thing about the label of gangs is it brings with it a whole other element. What, we're, what I'm talking about, what I see is young people, young people that think they're safe places that they can um, stab someone without. The stuff that's happening out there and what he's talking about is absolutely true, the safe spaces. The work that we do with SOS Plus, which goes into schools, colleges, community centres, really uses ex-offenders, um, those with first-hand experience, actually we provide them with that safe space. And many areas are still in denial. Like, that, like when we go into school, some teachers say, right, no, we don't have a knife problem here. But when the young people start talking to us, it's actually quite shocking what, how much they know. They need to be supported and guided and also given safe alternatives. It's not just as simple as saying, don't carry a knife, because actually if they don't carry a knife, they might have to make some very serious 
choices, there might be consequences to that. Actually, we need to hear the young mm. people. Let's hear their world. Let's see what they're experiencing and let's support them. And Roger Grave, uh, with these latest shootings overnight in London, um, that's, you know, gun crime and knife crime as well. We gather knife crime is, is responsible for most of the murders that they've been um, so far this year in the capital. What, what can the police do about this? Well, it's very interesting because the knife spread of gun crime in the 90s happened because at that point there were a lot of drug dealers who were using teenagers to carry drugs for them and gave them weapons in order to protect their territory and their roots. Then it became sort of fashionable in its own way. And furthermore, the other kids felt if everyone else is carrying guns, I better have one or at least have a weapon that I can defend myself. Now, I think the spiral and the increase in gun crime and knife crime is also, I, do, junior, I agree with Junior that it's not just gangs, but they need protection from somebody and somewhere and something. And therefore, these are people who, unless they can be build the kind of trust that Junior's talking about, they're going to carry those weapons just for self-preservation, self I think. And Junior, some people will say watching this, you know, the answer to that, if they are carrying these weapons, is to increase stop and search. Hmm. Well, we've already seen that actually when it's not intelligence led, things like that can backfire. And one of the problems that happen with that is that it's more damaging and fraying to the communities that are involved. And really, in order to reduce this, we need better community cohesion. We need more people coming together. We need actual investment in these communities. These are young people that feel that they're separated from society. They need involvement. We need to hear their voices. We need to hear their perspectives. And they need that support um, in order to break that negative cycle. OK, Junior Smart and Roger Grafe, many thanks to both of you. Thank you very much indeed for Thank your time. You. Thank you.